Hello everyone, welcome to Integrated Medical Biochemistry with Dr. Bijoya. Today's topic is Abnormal Constituents in Urine Part 1. So today we will be discussing about glucosuria and glycosuria. So the composition of urine depends on the kidney functions which include glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion. So urine is nothing else but the filtrate of the blood that is carried out by the kidney glomerulus and the tubules. Now the abnormal constituents of urine include reducing sugars, ketone bodies, proteins, blood, bile salts and bile pigments. So today we will discuss about the presence of reducing sugars in urine. Whenever we are examining urine, first we take a look at the gross appearance of the urine which includes color, odor and the appearance or the transparency of the urine. The microscopic examination may be done for cells, cars, crystals and bacteria and biochemical examinations are done to find out the abnormal constituents of urine. So today we will in brief discuss about the gross appearance and the tests that are done to find out glycosuria in a urine sample. For other details such as physical appearance, specific gravity and pH, check to the link that I shall provide in the details below my description. Now the gross appearance. Here we are doing a comparison between normal urine and the urine of patient. So the normal urine is clear and transparent and so is the patient sample. But the normal urine here has straw color whereas the color of the patient having um, abnormal urine is more watery and let us look at the reason that in glycosuria the patient may be more thirsty so which is known as polydipsia and because of constant or frequent drinking of water he has an urge to pass urine frequently and that is known as polyuria so due to rehydration con continuously the percentage of water is more and so the water looks uh, so the urine looks more watery or well hydrated as you can see this is the index of hydration and a very dark urine is that of severe dehydration whereas almost transparent colorless or mildly colored urine is a is shows well hydrated person's urine so these are the hydration categories and the hydration category will also influence the specific gravity of the uh, urine. So for details of specific gravity, please refer to the link given below in my description. Now the tests for glycosuria indicate are Benedict's test, the dipstick or the reagent strip test and chromatography. We will discuss the first two uh, types of tests here. Chromatography shall be discussed in another lecture. Now the Benedict's test is one of the most common tests and for this we need 2 ml of Benedict's reagent and 0.5 ml of the urine sample. Uh, these are mixed and then boiled for 2 to 3 minutes and then it is allowed to cool at room temperature uh, and the precipitates are allowed to settle. Now in Benedict's test, let us look at the principle. The reducing sugar under alkaline condition reduces the cupra, cupric to cuprous on heating and this change in the oxidation state of cupric to cuprous gives green, yellow, orange or red precipitate depending on the concentration of sugar present in the sample. So, uh, if these changes occur, that means the sample has 
reducing sugars. Now the renal threshold for glucose is 160 to 180 milligrams per deciliter. That which means that the glucose can cross the glomerular membrane only when the blood levels of glucose are once more than 180 milligrams per deciliter. So uh, this is the Benedict's reagent and uh, on adding Benedict's reagent to urine sample, this is the color of Benedict's reagent on adding it to urine sample and boiling it for a few minutes, the uh, appearance of the uh, precipitate will depend upon the amount of reducing sugar present in the urine sample. So Benedict's test is a semi-quantitative test because different colors indicate the range of uh, glucose present in the sample. It doesn't give the exact value but it gives a range. So because it gives a range of concentration, it is semi-quantitative. Now this is a, a sample showing blue color. So this indicates no reducing sugar is present. If the precipitate is green in color, that means there is traceable uh, amount of sugar present in the urine, which is 0.5 to 1 grams. If the precipitate is yellow, that means the sugar uh, concentration in urine sample is 1 to 1.5 grams percent. Now, if the color of precipitate is orange to red, that means there is moderately high amount of uh, reducing sugar in the urine which is 1.5 to 2 gram percent and if it is brick red then it is as high as uh, more than 2 gram percent and this is a very high amount of glucose press considered to be very high amount of glucose in the urine. So let us now look at the causes of glucose urea. So glucose urea that is the presence of urinary glucose means there is glucose in the urine. In normal patient, in normal person's urine, glucose is undetectable. So when glucose is detectable in the urine, it is known as glucose urea. Now glucose urea can be without hyperglycemia and with hyperglycemia. So what does this mean? Hyperglycemia means high amount of glucose in the plasma. So, glucose urea accompanied with high concentration of glucose in plasma is known as glucose urea with hyperglycemia. And if the blood levels of glucose is normal but it is present in urine, that means it is glucose urea without hyperglycemia. So the causes of glucose urea without hyperglycemia are renal glucose urea, pregnancy, hereditary disease of renal tubules, decreased renal threshold and heavy metal poisoning. Now the glucose urea with hyperglycemia causes include diabetes mellitus, elementary glucose urea, hyperthyroidism, hyperpituitarism, hyperadrenalism, stress and severe infections. So, glycose urea. Now, let us look at the interpretation. Whenever positive Benedict test is seen, it signifies glycose urea. Glycose urea is a non-specific term. Any reducing sugar found in urine is said to be glycose urea. So, the reducing sugar in Urine can be lactose, it can be galactose, it can be fructose or it can be pentose. So if lactose is present in urine, it is called lactose urea. If galactose is present in urine, it is galactose urea. If fructose is present in urine, it is fructose urea. And if pentose is present in urine, it is pentose urea. Lactose urea is seen in lactose intolerance. Galactose urea is seen in galactosemia, 
Fructose urea is seen in hereditary fructose intolerance, whereas pentose urea is seen in essential pentose urea. So all these sugars, these are disaccharides or monosaccharides. If they are found in urine and they are detected by Benedict's test, it is the common term glycose urea is used. Now in order to find out whether it is glucose or lactose or galactose or fructose or pentose, the specific tests have to be performed, which is not going to be discussed here. Now, there are certain other non-carbohydrate moieties as well which give positive Benedict's test. These include creatinine, ascorbic acid, glucuronates, drugs such as salicylates and isoniazid. These are some of the drugs and uh, other uh, biochemical molecules which give positive Benedict's reaction. So if they are excreted in urine and it gives Benedict's reaction, it may be because of one of these compounds also, not necessarily because of glycosuria. So, there is a more specific test which is the glucose oxidase peroxidase reaction and this is a principle for dry, st or dry stick or urea stick test. This is based on the enzymatic reaction. Uh, these enzymes are impregnated in the urine or a dry strip and here it is specific for glucose because Benedict's test is non-specific and it indicates presence of various molecules uh, which can reduce, um, which can uh, carry out changes in Benedict's reagent. So uh, this is an enzymatic re reaction where glucose is converted to H2O2 in the presence of glucose oxidase and this H2O2 binds with the chromogen which is impregnated in the strip uh, and the peroxidase reaction occurs and it forms a colored complex which is known as the oxidized chromogen. So this is how the strip, urine strip or the dipstick will look. Uh, for more details look at the link given in the description. These reagent strips are primarily methods for uh, the chemical examination of urine. They are most widely used and they are more sensitive and specific than the Benedict's test for glucose urea. So the advantage of this strip test is a quick screening of urine, reliable, specific, sensitive, avoids usage of various corrosive reagents. Uh, different types of glasswares are not needed. Uh, chemical testing of wet reagents are not needed. Centrifugation and acidification are not required. Less labor and intensive training are, are not needed and can be automated for large laboratories. Large screening can be done and there are less chances of human error. So these are the advantages of the strip test. Now these are some of the questions. What is glycosuria? Name the reducing substances present in urine. What is the renal threshold for glucose? State the changes you will observe in physical characteristics of glucose. Benedict's test is a semi-quantitative test. Explain why and what tests will you perform to differentiate between glucosuria and glycosuria?